good afternoon ladies and gentlemen respected keynote speaker respected authors participant welcome to the international conference on science and contemporary technologies 2021 organized by bangladesh university of business and technology i dr m piyush mida associate professor and chairman at department of csc bubt i am the coordinator of today's activity session of some research point on vision skeleton and sensor keynote speaker of this session is professor dr atikur rahman ahad department of electrical and electronics engineering university of dhaka especially appointed associate professor osaka university japan dr ahad is a senior member of ipoli he did bsc honors and masters from dhaka university and phd qtech Q- university jsps post doctoral fellow and visiting researcher he authored four book in springer published 130 more than 130 peer reviewed paper and 80 he not an invited talk and 20 award and recognition he is the editorial editorial board member of scientific report nature associate editor frontier in computer science editor in international journal of effective engineers in psychological computer graphics and games editor in chief ijcbsp general chair 9th icib 4th ibpr second abc guest editor pattern recognition letter elsevier and others journals we are lucky to have him in this session now i request honorable keynote speaker to deliver his keynote speech in this session thank you all for enjoying sir microphone your mic yeah Yes, thank you so much. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here, and I uh, thank the organizer uh, for having me. Uh, by the way, um, uh, this is me. My name is MD, uh, which is uh, uh, Mohammed, uh, especially in Bangladesh, not managing director or medical doctor. <laughs> so uh, Atiku Rahman Ahad. Uh, I luckily, I mean, what you have uh, presented. Thank you so much introduction, uh, but it was based on last year, I guess. so uh, by this time i become a senior member of optical society the optical society of america osa which is uh, just last month and i'm uh, happy uh, to be a senior member of that though these are not uh, that much uh, difficult uh, being a fellow is ext- extremely difficult i hope that young researchers here will try to be and dream for i triple fellow and then work very hard from the beginning uh i am working at the uh, university of dhaka and uh, at this moment i am at osaka university if you would like to know more about my works you can visit ahadvisionlab.com or if you are interested on any of my works uh, to discuss further you can email me hopefully i'll try to manage and uh, have some brainstorming so uh, it's wonderful uh, to be with you again and uh, i congratulate i congratulate you all for this uh, wonderful conference because this is the first time you have done it and now i know that uh, it is uh, going well so few points i mean uh, regarding this that i mean when we go for idea uh, which is very important we need lots of brainstorming thinking learning and that thinking and learning should be based on the state of the arts it means that latest technology latest issues and uh, it should be based on knowledge mm, not uh, any emotional uh, issue uh, sometimes uh, we do research uh, not we do research we try to do research uh, based on emotional issues uh, without having deep knowledge so knowledge is important without knowledge we cannot move further so this conference uh, is a uh, an important avenue for the young researchers especially uh, to plan and think uh, alike we need much collaboration uh, uh, among uh, various disciplines so this is very important as well it's not only important for uh, csc or triple e it can be 
covered with, uh, I mean, other faculties and departments as well. Industry, private, and academia, government stakeholders, we need lots of collaborations. And uh, we talk about AI and my, all of my topics are basically um, devoted to AI or artificial intelligence, but uh, to have uh, or to initiate any AI, we need real AI, which is real intelligence. And we need normal and standard intelligence. And without knowledge, without hard working, without studying, uh, if you, we cannot have real knowledge. And if we don't have real knowledge, uh, whatever AI we would like to explore will be, I mean, not proper AI. It's just like, I mean, uh, doing something. Remember, uh, Rathuni spices you buy and uh, cook something is not real cooking, okay? Uh, if there are some uh, people who are good at cooking with this spices, packed spices, and then take the credit, uh, don't feel that you are good cook. And then please uh, read, read. Uh, so that we can grow authentically. Uh, I am from University of Dhaka. This is uh, one of the uh, buildings. Uh, I mean, uh, this is another one. Uh, and this is Osaka University, totally different than Dhaka University. Of course, arts faculty, arts faculty, though that area is different. From the top, it looks great. I hope that everybody, uh, those who are based in Bangladesh, uh, you visit there. Uh, my talk uh, today will be based on mainly uh, the books. Uh, so far, I wrote and edited uh, 10 books uh, are published and uh, four or five will come by the end of this year, hopefully, and some others uh, and so on. So before I start, I'd like to make a few points for young researchers because uh, uh, I mean, some of you may leave in between uh, before, when I start my topic. So, uh, so select topic where, where you can work, which is important. Uh, introduce excellent data sets. If you think that the data set is not available, especially healthcare applications are very important globally, especially when you consider the COVID issue. When COVID came, uh, we were scared. Now we are less scared, even though more people died. And uh, we now feel that we need more and more avenues to get solutions from home, uh, uh, IoT sensor-based or um, video-based or image-based solutions are very important. And everything, uh, we, whatever we want to do, we need AI and machine learning and so on. So that's why, I mean, you can explore new, new dimensions and try to find solutions. Don't jump easily on products, uh, which sometimes we do, especially newspapers. I mean, they publish very, very weak things uh, with so much uh, in highlighting point of view, uh, which I don't like. We should not do this because otherwise uh, immature things we publish. Some people that don't know, they will praise but most of the people who really know, they will feel sad about it. So until you profoundly do experimentations and satisfied with the results, don't jump on products or publications. Uh, don't uh, jump on any hot topics uh, like AI, deep learning, machine learning, or blockchain. Know and then move on that. So that's why we need to understand and it should be based on true knowledge. And research is not like, uh, I mean, just first sight and first love. We need to learn and knowledge-based realistic plans are very important. The next point uh, I mentioned uh, that uh, don't uh, keep doing easy things always. Don't run for publications only. Uh, the conference organizers uh, will always feel that, okay, submit papers. But uh, I at the same time feel that we should not consider publications only the motto for research uh, and better and better is important very young researchers for for you to get some motivations you can explore some local conferences or international uh, mediocre conferences at the beginning but next one should be very high and uh, sometimes you may not find a solution uh, so never uh, I mean, not never, but don't just look into the solutions always because sometimes you try something different, uh, it can be useful and productive. And hard work is very, very important. Uh, I salute the doctors and nurses and related staffs who are, I mean, doing a lot for more than half, one and a half years. Uh, so for them, we need to 
find more solutions and these can be based on video or skeletons or sensors so i'll give some examples here you will find that some works are directed in that direction but of course none of those uh, works are matured uh, so that we can implement but if we can continue working on one of those areas hopefully things will be better if we love our people and country and humanity then we must do the best so that we can uh, do the best changes in the future so uh, this topic will cover action or activity and gate basically on healthcare domain uh, based on vision and vision has another one which is a skeleton i'll show you later and iot sensors if you don't know what is computer vision it is nothing but uh, like i have my, uh, this one and i can see and my brain processes so this is human vision or another animal has their own vision computer has can be or an intelligent system can have cameras it can collect images or videos but can we understand what is in the image or what is in the video and based on this i mean we can uh, realize so can we make a machine or, or for example that can see like camera uh, and that can understand what is going on like human or animals or blinds or even beyond the spectrum so these are important thing remember uh, some of you uh, i mean uh, may work on a computer vision which is like rgb image a very few of you are working on uh, infrared domain but uh, you we can also explore uh, other i mean uh, image domains and that can be interesting work and you can find interesting solutions and so on so we know that i mean computer vision machine vision image processing signal processing uh, mathematics uh, neurobiology imaging uh, ai those are and robotics those are interconnected so uh, are interconnected and these are very important uh, and uh, most importantly if you are weak at mathematics like me then go for mathematics because this is very important and human activity is important to understand we can use sensors or videos we can wear sensors here and then uh, try to find solutions video based we have rgb like normal image from mobile phone or any other cameras uh, skeleton which we cannot get directly till now from the mobile phone i don't know whether there is any mobile phone which has uh, uh, the ability to provide a skeleton data till now i know that some uh, companies are working uh, uh, behind the scene in the r d and one of my friends actually he's working in japan uh, in a large mobile phone company globally so he rang me to discuss about things that they are also considering uh, phone based some activities which we are doing research now they are thinking for uh, their system so uh, skeleton is one important part a skeleton means that from the image instead of image you get the body joint point so uh, uh, for example this uh, wrist has a one point and this uh, here one point and this one point this is another point this is another point so if you have 25 or 30 body joint points like xyz xyz uh, then those points can be explored or you can analyze those points to find uh, some data or some solutions so for example i raise my hand like this way or i raise my hand like this way so they, these are different things so but the ang i mean uh, elbow angles are different the azimuth or i mean um, other informations are different so based on those differences we can decipher different activities or we can uh, use those data to understand for example a rehabilitation uh, patients activities remotely so now uh, we can have kinect sensors which is not available now microsoft has stopped it or other companies sensors or they have azure for example or we can consider uh, the uh, systems like motion capture system from where uh, we can get different body joints or directly from rgb data 
now we can use open pose or alpha pose these kind of methods and get body joint points so these are possible now depth image is another one but you need a special camera to explore the depth image and so on so these are the different things and of course online means real-time applications and offline these are important as well Smartphones are very widely used for different, I mean, healthcare applications or human activity recognitions. And uh, I don't know whether this conference has some papers on, uh, uh, I mean, skeleton, I mean, smartphone-based data. But uh, for example, this smartphone it has accelerometer, gyroscope, and compasses, and GPS, and as different sensors. So those sensor data can be used for different kind of applications. So basically, we try to recognize, that means understand what it is. So for example, you can see it, you can understand that this is a mobile phone having a camera. Uh, if you look at it, you can understand this is a sunglass, not a normal glass, and this is normal glass. So based on these, I mean, we try to understand a class or uh, we can recognize a class so which we can say that sort of pattern recognition or classification and so on so human actions or human activities we can do like that way but detection is another point that we try to understand where and when the action happened so sensor based uh, cases like if you have a mobile phone based or like for example this is a passive uh, sensor it has sensors so if i use it so it's this sensor data can be collected to through a network or something or maybe it has uh, if it has any powerful uh, processing capacity so it can process and give some data uh, and definitely uh, there are i mean thousands of works based on accelerometer data or gyroscope data called human activity recognition and these are based very much possible by using uh, i mean low computational capacity but you need to uh, try uh, not on laptop not on pc but can you do it on uh, a small device like this where the uh, capacity is small battery life is small and other iot sensors and so on so this these are the challenges many applications especially in healthcare i make it again and again because uh, of covid this demand for different sensors based app healthcare applications surveillance and man machine applications and so on so for example uh, it can be applied on video surveillance or uh, sports analysis or action understanding by robot uh, I'll show that just today, one of our papers uh, have been accepted in a uh, relatively good conference. Uh, so that, that is on robot-based therapy for autistic children. So uh, I'll show just at the end uh, uh, of this presentation. Hospital rehabilitation center or a smart house, we have some works. I'll show those as well. Or uh, basically, uh, I'll present those so that you can get different kinds of, I mean, topics or or areas where we can work entertainment and uh, so on especially another one is fall detection which is very important globally uh, because fall is a dangerous problem and uh, you can we can say that we can ignore it but uh, just think about that uh, among our family members if someone is elder and fall down and then broken ribs or uh, ribs is here sorry I mean, waste or I mean, some other parts and how much suffering. So these are the things we need to consider. Sensor based for daily exercise monitoring, patient monitoring outside hospital. You can say that why do we need this? Just think about that. When we go to hospital, how much money we spend? If we go to the public hospital, government hospital, we don't pay, but government is giving subsidies. So actually money is there, spendings are there. Now I have a surgery, for example, don't think that I have a surgery I don't want. And then I returned home and I, I must follow some rules and regulations and must take some medications, but I'm not doing that. So what will happen? That slowly I'll not grow, be better and I may have some other problem, I'll go to the hospital again. So uh, extra money. And if it is for one person, and if it is for 1 million person in a year, think how much wastage of money and pressure for the doctors and other things. Now, if we can make some systems through which we can monitor different kinds of diseases 
or patients so that they don't need to come to the hospital they can warn you give you warning that i mean do it or follow it or something like this based on this we can help people this is one I mean, uh, another one is that sensor-based fault detection. Fault detection is okay because uh, it is important. Because if I fall down, now I am alone at my home. If I fall down suddenly, nobody is here. If the phone is not near to me and I cannot move, then it may happen that I can die. So if there is a sensors on my body or in the toilet or in the room, there are some uh, different kinds of sensors. They are collecting data regularly and based on those data and some uh, machine learning approaches, if we can make a system that, OK, I fall down and then I'm not standing up. So there is something problem. So you can ignite that, OK, uh, some alarm to something or give someone some information or maybe my I mean, uh, what do you call it? Uh, say my camera at home uh, is on to my relatives or doctors or something for security purpose. On that case, this is very important. You can save me. But what about fall prediction? That before I fall down, my health data says that I am very tired and in time I can fall down. So it can predict and give me warning beforehand. That is much imp more important. For example, this device gives me every one hour some vibration. So when I wear it and I work for one hour, it vibrates. So I feel, oh, one hour. So I just walk a few a bit, move my bodies, okay, uh, in a corner, and then I come back to work. So that's better than what I did today. I had nine to six uh, or five p.m. So you see how long, and then afterwards I returned home and I have been working. So nine to nine, almost twelve hours, I have been working on the chairs, and I felt that I have little bit back, I mean, spasm, I'm back pain a bit. So. If I, I, and I did not uh, use it today. So uh, that's why I cannot be aware of. So uh, if we have a system that will make me aware of that I may fall down. So before I get the accident, I know what is going on. Our elderly care in case of emergency, it is very important. In Bangladesh, we don't care that much. Most of the people, we care when there is a problem. Uh, but in uh, the rich countries, uh, it's a problem because many people are single. In Japan, I mean, I mean, you will be surprised, almost 30% of the populations are 65 plus, and many of them are living alone in their home. So uh, it's a big problem. So, and you cannot put everybody in the hospital, no need, or elderly care support system, okay? You need to put the, uh, stay, uh, let them at home and then, make a system so that uh, it can be automatically monitored and in case of any abnormality we can find i can remember that in australia probably in melbourne when i was in australia maybe i read this news or after uh, 15 or 20 years back something like that so that one lady she was alone and she had uh, one or two alsatian uh, dogs and uh, finally they found that she died and the dogs eat her it her and it was a disaster and so on, but nobody could knew because the neighborhood was not so close to each other and no friends and so on. So, so it, it is a big problem. And in our country as well, like Bangladesh or India and developing countries, uh, still we have more, more and more. Uh, I mean members are living alone. So that's why it is also important that we try to make some system. Remote monitoring of pregnant women, this is another very important point. Globally, women, uh, pregnant women, they die or suffer severely uh, because of different problems. But if we can make some kind of systems through which we can monitor something and then uh, give them warning and they can go to the doctors uh, uh, or hospitals properly or uh, due time then that is important so these kind of things are extremely important i did not put the autism issues or dementia uh, okay but uh, dementia covers uh, most of the cases with elderly or alzheimer's or parkinson's and so on but these kind of things can be done uh, human actions, uh, it, uh, it's not only like, I mean, uh, uh, doing by one person, it can have human-human interactions, two persons or more than two persons collective activities, uh, man-machine interactions, like when we are dealing with robots and others, uh, human object interactions, it's also important. Um, and actions are very difficult, as you know, and sometimes we do multitasking and it's not so easy. 
So there are lots of data sets which I mentioned based on RGB or video or here like depth image, but depth image or skeletons are basically indoor uh, based on sensors. But if you use uh, uh, open pose, then you can do it outdoor as well, but the high computational cost is needed. So uh, this is one. Another one is you will find that ADL activity of daily living. It's like a bit longer period if someone is doing something especially important for healthcare rehabilitations or occupational therapy so that we can understand a person's uh, activities. For example, this is a data set where they using grasping uh, something. So if you have a camera in the next slide, I guess. So I let me uh, try this video. Uh, so you can see that, I mean, uh, different kinds of activities. So look at here that different things are going on and uh, say that the camera, this is the camera. Say, for example, here is a camera or I have a camera here or this one uh, camera or camera is here. So the camera is looking at many different things uh, and try to understand what uh, uh, I mean the person is doing. Based on this, there can be many different kinds of applications, especially virtual, uh, I mean, augmented reality for automations, not only that at home. Like for example, uh, I'll show that cooking activity, there is a competition last year held uh, with ABC conference and so on. So, um, and these are important, especially for a paralyzed or uh, rehabilitation stages so that we can understand the progress of a person or we can monitor the person's activities, how perfect he or she is, this kind of things. Video-based data sets become very large because nowadays they are based on YouTube data and extremely large, so many classes and very difficult to handle if you do not have, I mean, the several GPUs or big server capacity, then you cannot work that much. And of course, deep learning is the only option. Now I come back to the skeleton, which I mentioned at the beginning, that is skeleton based, I mean, uh, uh, action recognition data sets, there are about 100. Most of the data sets are smaller, uh, having a few classes only but, and suitable for handcrafted features uh, or classical approaches. But uh, recently, there are a few data sets, large data sets, especially from NTU Singapore, having 60 classes or 120 classes, multiple views, and sometimes interactions between a couple of people and so on. So deep learning is the only option and so on. So what you get instead of image, so you see that nowadays one image frame is few megabytes in size. But if you consider, uh, uh, I mean, skeleton, basically one, instead of one image, you can get say 25 body joint points. So 25 points are basically X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X. So one text file or CSV file, you have just one time, you have say uh, 25 times three. Uh, those are the, uh, if you multiply uh, 75 points, I guess that I my, my multiplication is not wrong. So uh, those points are important. And again, some of the points you can ignore. So if you consider, okay, only 10 points are most important for one set of actions. Like if I sit down and do some activities, on that case, my leg part or bottom part is not so important. So you can ignore that one. So only few points or few data are there for a skeleton. Of course, um, uh, limited data means you are poor in terms of intra relationship, but still you get some uh, faster processing. And for many applications, especially where privacy is a major concern, you can consider a skeleton data because we don't want to share our photos because of privacy. But if you go for a skeleton, then basically it's a pseudo privacy issue, but it's still it's not a direct one. But if I, uh, that's the point. So if you are willing to work on that, then go for a skeleton based, uh, I mean, different applications on its uh, human activity recognition. And there are lots of data sets as well you can explore. Sensor-based activity, there are over 150 data sets. So last year, our uh, book uh, published on human activity recognition based on uh, sensor-based, IoT sensor-based human activity recognition. You can find the book details in my website as well and search Google uh, to find some uh, free pages. 
uh, if you can buy, you can buy, but uh, there is, uh, it's expensive, like, I mean, $130 or whatever. Uh, but if you buy, then I get some money. <laughs> That's the point. But don't buy uh, if you have no money. Uh, so, for example, UCI, they have a repository, you know, they have lots of data sets. And those data sets are based on normal human activities, medical or sports or household or transportation data sets. I'll show some examples and some of our works. Fall detection techniques, there are 12 plus more than 12 data sets there, uh, physiological health related data sets and so on. And uh, still we need some more data sets. So if you find that there are no data sets regarding any specific issue, you can create a new data set, but make sure that the data set is done professionally so that it can be benchmarked and used by many people. So uh, these are the few points. So we need to work on uh, rehabilitation and nursing home and so on. Now I put some challenges and then I'll give some of my examples. Uh, understanding collective activities is very important nowadays uh, because we, especially for security purpose that we need to know whether some people are grouping and they, they, they want to fight and uh, whether they are, the people are just talking and so on. We need to understand normal versus abnormal activities, which is extremely important when there are lots of crowd. And especially if you know that the Hajj, the Muslims pilgrimage in Makkah, uh, that time every year it's a huge trouble uh, when there is a turbulence or some accident or something, because people, I mean, lots of people are moving. And uh, if anything happens, it's very difficult to locate. So if we can locate those pockets of, I mean, disturbances or any problem, then instantly we can take some actions and take awareness. So this is very important and even life saving. There are some works on that as well. You can search Google and find. Another is that, I mean, in India, we know that every year, more or less, I mean, in different, I mean, temples, I mean, uh, it happens, this kind of accidents and people die. So that's why, apart from, I mean, political violences and criminal activities in different places. Real-time problem. So when we want to do some work, basically, we just follow the traditions. And most of the traditional works are not real time because we do, we, why we do research? Basically at the early stage, we do research so that we can learn how to solve a problem, even in PhD level. And then uh, if we work in uh, R&D in companies, then R&D sectors, they try to solve real time, uh, I mean, real life problems and uh, uh, go for products. But uh, in the university level, uh, we produce, I mean, uh, R&D experts or, I mean, uh, just to give some kind of training. So publications become a major uh, issue. Uh, so that's why we don't always consider real-time issues. But if there is a problem and it's not real-time, if you just try to make it real-time, then it's a good one. So remember that we don't have GPUs everywhere and it is, it is expensive as well. So how to deal with real time issues? So that can be another option. So if you find a good method which is working well, but not real time, go for it, make it real time, try to make it real time. Okay, or go try to make it uh, workable for smaller devices and so on. Sensor-based approaches can be explored wherever possible because uh, it is a uh, lightweight. Oh, I, I, I didn't mention that sensor-based, like, I mean, if you have accelerometer or gyroscope-based uh, data, then those data are basically like skeleton, only X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, the axis and only. So very small amount of data. So you can use those time, I mean, time series data and uh, using normal machine learning approaches or LSTM based approaches uh, in a, uh, a simple machine, you can find solutions. But again, if you want sensors like IoT sensors uh, and low capacity, low power, low battery, then how to handle, this is important. And sometimes for some data, you don't need data uh, for every second or every millisecond. On that case, how you can deal. These kind of things are important. Applications in different uh, domains like gait analysis, gesture, emotion, running patterns, fall down prediction, facial expression analysis, these are important. Uh, for example, like if you consider uh, hmm, uh, hmm, 
okay i i just had no need to consider i move on because i think that i i i don't have much time so applications of aging society which i mentioned that aged people are increasing globally it's not only rich countries problem uh, we will face this problem in bangladesh or india as well because if you consider last 20 years or more many families they have one or two children and uh, sometimes uh, both of them are leaving the country for overseas so what will happen the parents are here and since long we are not centralized i mean nucleus family and so on so what happens that i mean only one if and and unfortunately if one of the parents dies then what happens only one person and he or she may suffer this kind of challenges and we can say that okay we don't like elderly uh, support system and so on we hate this this is inhuman but uh, your parents are suffering at home for heart safety or for his safety you need some uh, solutions so globally smart house concept is growing on in our lab one group is working one of my students uh, uh, mr masood when he visited our lab as a research student uh, so he started this work and it is going on based on camera and uh, uh, at home uh, on the bed and the just only thing is that rgb cameras initially was forbidden but now we are using but we are not storing the data but we are taking this i mean uh, uh, but depth information and some other things we try to understand the sleeping postures and movements overall like uh, following you entirely so that if any accident happens we can locate and help this is important not seeing home these kind of data sets are very important but for privacy these are not shared but we can implement and do it we need good data sets uh, where intentions conditions uh, uh, and other things are uncontrolled and uh, mm, uh, spontaneous rich human behavior are uh, needed multimodality is very important most of the visual papers are based on RGB or depth or skeleton. Very rarely you'll find that the three modalities are combined and sensors are added. So yeah, this is, so that's why can we include wearable sensors or depth map and skeleton data or sometimes text to understand the context or audio to understand the context, the situation, because if I am in a place where you can hear some background noise, based on the background noise, you may understand my locations or where I am. So based on this, you can make some decisions. So these are important. Uh, object recognition is very important. Facial information or action units from where you can understand how I feel. Now the point is, I mean, when I, uh, uh, I mean, give lecture and I see sometimes the participants uh, uh, face, especially if you have a, a wear glass and if you uh, enjoy my talk and while uh, you enjoy some movie or Facebook, I can notice it. Anyone can notice it because uh, here you can see uh, from the glass. But this is you can uh, do from the glass. If there is an intelligence system to understand that whether the participant is attentive or not, you can get from here. Now you don't have class, that's fine. So what will happen? Can you understand from my uh, muscle movements, from facial, because this is a very important research area since long, over two decades, people are working on emotions and psychology understanding based on facial action units and coding system, facts, uh, what we call it, and basic uh, emotions are, I mean, done through this process. Now, the point is that I made a joke or I share the humor, but there is no reflection on your face. It means that you are not listening to my talk or you are autistic. So this is, I mean, one very, uh, I, I mean, uh, Im important thing. So now we want to know whether my students in online classes globally, online lectures become so much important, but we don't know how to evaluate. Now, if we make a system based on facial action unit coding system existing system in such a manner that zoom if we have 20 students everyone's video is there and based on the lectures there are some cues or punch lines just like i mean comedians do and based on this the emotions are not reflecting on your face then it will give some score and based on some evaluations can come 
it's uh, i mean very interesting and you can also judge whether a talk is boring whether a talk is very interesting whether someone is very interesting or attractive something like this so that's why these are very very important and multimodality is very important but there are not much work on multimodality i tried special issue did not get enough papers then a special issue in pattern recognition letters uh, uh, but still not that much most of the papers are still uh, single mode and uh, but for example age estimation age estimation means that from face we can understand the age uh, automatically uh, you, you can under, uh, ask me that why the hell i need to know the age it, it has so many different applications so you need to study google search for research paper not normal blogging because uh, those are not uh, useful face based age estimation or gait human walking based age estimations uh, those are very important research areas and huge applications i mean for surveillance and understanding even marketing policy like if you are uh, i mean on the stairs or elevator you are uh, just going and your face or walking pattern based on these i can understand your age range or and at the same time gender automatically from your photo okay then i can show you some of the advertisements of the shopping centers which may be more suitable for you okay if you are female and i show you male advertisements it will not attract you usually and vice versa so that's why face based or gaze based but do we have any face plus gate combined age estimation no so someone can start and see how it works another point is that emotion or facial expressions lots of progresses are there but what about mask if i use mask and if i just make a joke or if i smile or angry you cannot get the total information especially if my forehead i mean here not much changes or you cannot see the eye movements and so on so that's why it is very important that i mean we consider multimodality and so on we need to understand uh, much more and uh, mm, what will happen in the future i mean immediate future and what happened and i am understanding it now it's okay lots of progresses are there still huge i mean gaps but can we report based on the context can we understand uh, what will happen in the near future that is very important especially for fall prediction which i mentioned earlier so if you are not working on that area you try if you can do something that would be very very pioneering work and useful work there are lots of other challenges you can try like dynamic environment cluttered scenes too much variabilities uh, i mean camera motion uh, low resolution data low quality data and how you can handle especially weather variabilities like i mean if it's darker or if it's raining now our cameras and many works we can recognize the, um, the persons walking or front cards or something like this but if it's rainy or if it is foggy then what will happen so these are very very important research areas and you don't need enough data you can create a small amount of data set based on small data and try to implement existing excellent methods to show them that those methods are failing or not performing well on difficult data sets now next generation will try or you will try based on your study to find how to solve one problem at a time those are extremely important actions with various objects or intentions indoor versus outdoor healthcare related multi sensors these are very important especially missing sequences so i'll give you some examples like cooking activity recognition challenge where cooking is very important you say that oh we can cook but it has important uh, uh, point especially to monitor the nutrition of elderly people like i'm elderly i'm cooking something based on my cooking activities and the camera overall you can give me an uh, input or an output that what about my cooking nutrition and something like this whether i have any missing step you can think that oh those are utopian thinking no these are important and today we are using zoom just few years back it was unthinkable to use i mean that much easy so the many things are important for the future but the point is that reality uh, is uh, imbalanced data 
because sometimes we do some activities much more, sometimes we do much less. So when we make a data set, uh, imbalanced data is a common thing, but how to handle imbalanced data with proper machine learning approaches or better feature extraction is important. So um, uh, this is the data, uh, I mean, uh, so you can say that just, uh, I mean, this is one motion capture data and another one uh, showing how they are uh, cooking something. So uh, um, definitely results are different. Uh, we had a couple of papers last year. Nurse care activity, another real life challenging that in hospital nurses are overwhelmed by work and work and work. How to manage their workload and help them and so on. So um, uh, luckily we participated last year and this year as well. This year we have three papers at least Yeah, uh, at UC, uh, SCM EV comp, uh, uh, conference. There is a uh, challenge in that challenge from lab to field. We participated last year and this year as well, real life data so uh, and real life data is difficult there are lots of missing data huge class imbalance problem which is a reality no complaint about that and some actions are very short duration and human error as well to input the data and so on so these are the all the papers i mentioned are our work so i mean uh, so what you can see that real life data is difficult but we need to try. And luckily last year we achieved second best prize and third best prize. And you see that the first one got only 22% accuracy. So it doesn't matter that your result is, I mean, 99% or 90%. It's meaningless that if the data is so naive or so simple and you get best results, there is no credit. So try to explore some challenging areas where people did not explore and try to be a leader in that research domain. It is possible. Gate recognition is another important area. Uh, it's occlusion actually in our lab in, with Toyota company, there is a work. And previously uh, by Dr. Joshimuddin from Rokeya uh, University, uh, I think they call it Berubi. Uh, that university, he did excellent works. Uh, it, this is one of his works where, I mean, he considered that uh, gate recognition uh, with occlusions because this is uh, extremely less explored area. Gate means walking pattern. If you don't know, this. This is a huge research area that from video or sensor data walking from the walking patterns we try to understand a person or his identity and it has been used implemented this kind of methods in japan in the criminal investigations to find criminals because and i guess that you saw a movie some of you that i mean uh, uh, who is the guy? I mean, uh, Morgan Freeman and uh, two others, three elderly people, they um, robbed a bank and also did something and their walking patterns were considered to find the criminals, but somehow they survived and <laughs> that was a funny uh, movie. Uh, I don't recommend to watch the movie. I recommend you to find papers on gate recognition and study more on that. So the point is that uh, what he tried is not important. The important point is that we did not have, we do not have large scale occlusion data. So what we can do, like, can you make 10,000 persons data with different kinds of occlusions? No. So in, of course you can, but it takes several years or much more efforts. So what he did that he artificially, very intelligently, artificially, I mean, cropped some of the information and of different levels of occlusions from different angles, different percentages, and finally use those data for his analysis. So if you do not have any data, make it difficult challenging data because real life is challenging and if you don't have data and it's difficult then create artificially from natural data and try on different experimental settings and compare with state-of-the-art methods SOTA S-O-T-A what we call it Sensor-based gate to estimate, this is another one uh, uh, we tried uh, these data sets and uh, uh, we found that, I mean, just to make the summary that, I mean, deep learning based methods on sensor based still there is a hope for handcrafted features as well but now you can check that whether deep learning is suitable or handcrafted features suitable or both. Most of the cases, if the data set is bigger, 
then deep learning can be more suitable. For image domain or vision domain, deep learning becomes the only option, <laughs> okay? But still for a skeleton or uh, sensor-based, we can explore this. So now we, I mean, I just uh, mentioned that, do we need the new data set? Yes or no, it depends. Uh, we created a new data set with the University of Tokyo. Uh, most of the works here I present are basically my uh, works with at Hakka University, Tripoli department. Most of the works uh, are presented here, so you can find it. Uh, so for example, uh, just uh, the, uh, this paper is published this year that a new data set on emotional sound from large crowd events. We found that, I mean, that there is a new paper last year in a good journal. They introduced from Italy a data set with the crowd events. Now then we introduced a better data sets and so on. So when you do not have larger data, you try to make a new data. This is another one from uh, Sussex University's data sets, uh, uh, SHL. They organized the, I mean, challenge for the last four years and we have been participating from 18, 19, 20 and this year as well uh, at SCM UBCOM. You will find that this is a large data set having many different kinds of sensors. This year, basically they used Wi-Fi data, GPS data and so on to understand what kind of transportations people are using. This kind of information are very important for a smart city and so on. Sensor-based data sets are basically just like our real life, clean, perfect, no missing data, but in real life we have uh, missing data. So if you do not have uh, uh, challenging data, add some missing information to make it more realistic or make it difficult and try to do it. This is another work if you have a, a treadmill at home, try different sensors and cameras to understand whether a person's walking running pattern on the treadmill is healthy or not. Extremely important work, but extremely difficult as well. We have been trying, uh, but uh, the, uh, uh, we have been in here. This work is with Osaka University Hospital and Osaka University. So, uh, I mean, not good work till now. Gait disorder detection, like early detection of gait, like walking pattern disorder, if you can understand, then you can help the persons uh, so that before I become vulnerable, you can take me to the hospital and go for some medications and make me better. So this is important. So gait, most of the works on gait recognition are normal walking, but if you go for uh, abnormal cases, that is another important area. So there are only few data sets. So if you want to make a data set with the hospital collaborations, this is a good area. This is another important work area. This is in Japan. As, uh, so, uh, I mean, rehabilitation hospital and a company, uh, NEC basically. So we are trying to, we are working on stroke patients. Now, if you know doctors and stroke patients, you can consult with me. I'll be very happy to work on that area in Bangladesh as well, because uh, in Japan or other countries, because privacy, we cannot share the data. But in Bangladesh, if we can take the agreements from the patients and hospitals through proper ethical manners, then we can create a good data set and we can work because this is extremely important. Why? Because of COVID, we need to help our uh, patients who are elderly or stroke patients who are at home. They cannot go to the hospital because we are worried that if you go to the hospital, you can be attacked by COVID. So you stay at home, but how to support them? So now, now say I am a stroke patient okay my this hand is normal so i can catch anything everything is okay but this hand i cannot do properly now if you take the video of few actions tell me because in medical according to medical standard there are different kinds of tests doctors tell you to do they score based on the scores they give you some gradings and based on these they give you some medications or exercises to do why don't we do the same thing in front of a camera Doctors will not evaluate. You will assess those and analyze those and find solutions and try to make the ground truth with the doctor. So doctor will check and give a formal report that the level is like this and your system will try to be closer to that based on a skeleton based analysis or video analysis or emotion analysis or joint points, movement or sensors or whatever try and this is extremely extremely important for many different kinds of applications we can do it remotely it can be useful or this kind of concept can be useful for autism elderly dementia 
and uh, I mean, uh, Parkinson's and others. Hopefully, I'll be very much delighted that if some doctors and therapists and some other groups, uh, they come together and I'll try to help. So this is important. So it's not about understanding that this is a sunglass or this is a camera. It is important to know the quality, to give a score. Okay, uh, so that's and automatically without the involvement of therapist frequently. Can we do it based on video or skeleton or no sensors? Uh, this is important, but it is extremely difficult because the very slow progress, minute differences uh, each week, but great scope to work. So for example, here, I just show you just one example that this guy is a normal person. So see, the exercise is like this. So the, uh, I mean, different kinds of skeleton body joint points, this is depth image, are like this distribution. Forget about this distribution. Let's see the next one, that this is from a Parkinson's disease patient. And you see that the performance are highly different. From those data, you can analyze something and give some uh, information. And good that we are trying to do some of the works. And there's two papers public, I mean, accepted this year and from Bangladesh, uh, one with collaborations uh, we, uh, from Kulna University, Professor Nahid, and another one from my university. So we are working on, the, I mean, uh, we worked on in, uh, this is in Japan with another collaboration, QC Institute of Technology in hospital environment. Uh, this is also important. So if any clinic or hospital, they want to do something, sensor-based study to monitor the patients, their movements and so on, this is important. And remember in hospital, we don't care about privacy. Even nurses help me, I mean, uh, to go to the toilet and in front of me, their nudity is not important. Privacy is not important. Of course, it is important uh, outside, but within the hospital, it's not uh, important. We need to make sure that the patient is not falling down from the bed when the patient is trying to move from the bed to the toilet and uh, fall down. In Kyushu University Hospital, this is one of the largest and oldest in, uh, hospitals in Japan. My, one private meeting with uh, uh, some doctors, a research meeting, they said that every month they have more about 50 patients they fall down if i'm not wrong yes so almost every day there is a person they are falling down so you go to the hospital to be better but you fall down and remember those hot hospitals are not like our bangladeshi hospital that's slippery or more people or not like that these are excellent hospital but still people because it may happen so that's why it is important and we can try to do something Elderly person monitoring is extremely important, which I mentioned, and hospital rehabilitation elderly support need collaboration with the doctors and clinics. Don't ignore this point because we all will be older and we'll need it. Yeah, okay. And otherwise you can produce five or 10 children so that at least one or two will be good with you to take care. Nowadays, unfortunately, even if, uh, I mean, uh, I, I can say my case, unfortunately, I mean, I, I cannot help my mother and so on. So fall detection, which I mentioned uh, prior to any fall, our students in Bangladesh, I mean, we tried, but unfortunately it was painful to make a data set. Uh, so think how to do it, because here you can also consider data set and contactless apart from video. Can we use radar or Wi-Fi or anything else? You can, uh, I mean, uh, another marketing, you can just, this year the book is published, Contactless Human Activity Analysis. It is a good book if you want to work on contactless. And uh, recently one uh, uh, PhD from University of Hawaii uh, in our department, uh, Dhaka University, uh, Mahmoud. Dr. Mahmoud is working on Wi-Fi based or radar based, the contactless and so on. So if you are interested to work with him, uh, he's an excellent guy to work and he have published excellent papers and so on. Earable devices, now see this one, it has a cable, but if I remove the cable, don't do it. And then I put it here. And if it has like some kind of different uh, Bluetooth and uh, for example, uh, as I mentioned here, uh, as you can see that, I mean. Um, uh, uh, sorry, yeah. one interrupt. Oh. We are so I have one hundred one hour or ten minutes. <laughs> uh, five minutes, sir. Already six. I know. I told you to tell me fifteen minutes before so that I can move quickly. Anyway, okay. because you are not talking, so I, I thought that I still have a minimum fifteen minutes. Anyway, so uh, this is the IMU sensor. So these kind of sensors, you can use it and move. 
and it can be useful to give uh, you for socialization through speaking communications we have many people who have a speaking disorders especially autistic children or if you have an accident and then you have i mean broken jaws and you try speaking therapy so this kind of sensors because you cannot put sensors here Yes, if you can try, it is possible. But if you put a small air guard like this one, and then there's, that has, I mean, uh, I mean, sensors, those sensors can be uh, collected by using Bluetooth. And then you can use those things for different eating habits or swallowing or others and others and so on. So we published some works as well. Autism, we worked at, so autism detection and assistance, this is important, especially can we do it? for facial expression for kids or eye contact, uh, online support and follow up, especially during this tough time. Uh, luckily today, uh, this paper is published. So we tried with a good data set called Dream data set where they use not human therapy. So if you have a robot, the robot is handling uh, the uh, the child and uh, trying to do something. So they uh, so they this data set is very good because it has 61 kids and robot enhanced therapy and standard human uh, therapy and professional therapists were there to help. So they, uh, you can explore this one as well. Uh, we are happy that this paper is just just I added this slide just uh, I mean moment ago because this is accepted uh, two hours before. We also worked on uh, the, the, in Bangladesh. These are Bangladeshi works as well. Visual aid for contemporary, uh, I mean, completely blind. So we implemented uh, for blind, and this is published last year in uh, IEEE transactions. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, you can explore this paper as well. Tiredness or sleepiness is important because fatigue is very important. Especially, uh, Professor Firuz is extremely tired uh, because he is the uh, one of the main persons. And I know that those who are working with conferences, they are dead 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 i mean after the conference they just uh, uh, go to the bed and tell everybody that don't knock me for the next 24 hours so i mean uh, it, but you cannot see the fatigue when they smile but from their other information can you understand how fatigued or tired one person is you can say that why the hell i need it just remember that in japan there is a society called fatigue society because fatigue understanding is very important that's why they made a society so that they can understand and evaluate and move the research further so it is important so you can try it so mental health huge scopes to work, especially during this tough time for students, workers, even at home, especially for wives, uh, because many men are not uh, good with their wives at home. Uh, so this is important uh, to do the opposite. I mean, to be better, I mentioned the skeleton, so this is important. I mean, this paper is published in a good journal as well recently, and uh, we tried with five data sets on skeleton data. And uh, But now we are doing recognition. Can we do uh, further things which vision-based society or vision-based community progressed? Uh, so these are the few things uh, I mean, I'm just ignoring uh, to conclude. Actions or activity based on video or skeleton or different kinds of sensors are very important, many applications, but don't look into classification only. Try to go for prediction or evaluation and so on. So you need to find a new research area where you can implement. Don't just try what is going on and try to find something new which you can do back home with your limited capacity. I mean capacity, not intellectual capacity means your processor and others. You must do the best. Best hard work is important. And uh, with that, I would like to invite you all uh, to submit papers to the upcoming, uh, I think you can see the uh, this one, like third activity and behavior competing AVC conference, still, uh, I think, uh, two weeks or three weeks left. So if you are working on human activity and behavior, uh, this conference is solely for this purpose. Uh, you can submit, uh, and I'm one of the general organizers, so I, I hope that I'll help you if you need any uh, query to know so we need to work so no work is small that's important and no question is silly so always discuss and always share and uh, uh, some of you know uh, that these two conferences 10th icib and ibbr will be held just uh, from 16 august uh, in japan but online 
uh, so you visit the conference website after uh, I mean just four or five days uh, for especially for Bangladeshi uh, researchers for free registration uh, limited of course so that I mean uh, you can do the registration and enjoy some good talks and uh, so on so with that I thank my country Bangladesh uh, uh, and uh, Japan uh, especially and those pa partners and collaborators and my amazing students uh, uh, who did all the works I salute to them and they are extremely brilliant and that's why I always tell that we need to encourage our young researchers. It doesn't matter whether you are from private or public, whether you have high CGPA or poor CGPA, wherever you are, just start working and learning and keep working. And I request the teachers to keep much time, give quality time to those students so that they can develop themselves. And most of the works I have presented are from Bangladesh. So, uh, and those are published in top, top, top places, and more or less. And that's why I'm saying that, I mean, uh, our capacities are enormous. I hope that uh, we can do better. And I thank the organizer for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs>